itself. This is Mir Shachet from Muscle Development. We are here in Texas after the second day of Texas Pro. And I'm here with my protege, my client, my, my very good friend, uh, uh, Logan Franklin, who played second yesterday. We're going to talk about uh, your classic physique appearance and everything. But let's touch uh, the, the subject of open division. We just uh, witnessed it. You know, so uh, watching the, the pre-judging right now, how did you see open division? Oh, they definitely have the top three as the clear top three, in my opinion. You know, Ian, uh, I believe the other guy's name, Phil, yep. and then Steve. Great. A great little battle between those guys. Um, the first thing I noticed whenever I, whenever Ian came out, he, was, he had really crazy good, sharp quads. He was, he was sitting on his legs way better, uh, I think, this this weekend than last weekend. Um, maybe faded a little bit in the posing. Um, I feel sharp. Was, or the sharpest guy up there was was definitely Phil. Uh, his back his back was phenomenal. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was just yeah. overall. So yeah, you know, I'm going to say my opinion as well. We watch the show, and there's definitely top three in whichever order. Now, really, all three guys left the argument to win. I agree with uh, uh, Logan when uh, initially Ian came on the stage. I was like, whoa, this is best Ian I've ever seen. Full, hard, dry, legs super separated. And he kept it, uh, you know, to be fair, he kept it throughout the uh, pre-judging, but he was fading and sometimes relaxing his quads. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> On the merits of size and fullness, how can you go against uh, Steve? Steve Kuklo is just a monster. He's between 280 and 290 pounds. Everything is there, super full, wide, thick, hard and conditioned. Not really dry, so you know this is where he can possibly lose. But uh, no weaknesses, every uh, body part is there, every pose is dramatic. Now, Phil uh, Klahar again brought it, not just that he brought it, uh, I start. think he even improved. You didn't see him in uh, uh, Tampa last week. He came even sharper, which is you know hard to uh, believe. Uh, maybe somewhat flatter. So when you compare them, okay, uh, Jan and um, uh, Steve could overpower Phil. You know, I think Phil is 47 years old, veteran, super thin skin, polished, deep abs, everything is there. But maybe somewhat lengthy if you put them next to the two thick guys. Uh, so from a thickness uh, standpoint, I, I see uh, Steve uh, being a fuller and thicker and uh, just as wide as Jan. Jan has a, a more pronounced V taper. Yeah. So he has that little bit uh, more aesthetic beauty yeah, to say, him. Ian has the, uh, the way I see it, Steve has got the mass, uh, a little bit less condition, dryness. Uh, he could have definitely been more of that. Uh, yeah. Ian definitely brought the aesthetics out of the three you know like you said he was very sharp like I, I said as well very sharp when he when he came out started fading in the posing a little bit and then uh phil he just he was the sharpest of them all i i feel yeah uh best back up there but a little small i think in the legs yeah i, I think the legs would uh, uh it's actually a shape of his legs he has that sweeping ties but then goes into the very small joint of a, of a knee so he doesn't have that really thickness yeah. in the lower quads and then calves obviously in calves department steve you know <laughs> was phenomenal uh and uh, those are maybe weaknesses of uh, ian and phil now let's talk about the fourth place fifth and sixth you know so uh, martin fitzwater you know came out of nowhere he is uh, uh you know, training partner of, uh, of uh, um, uh, yeah, Brett Wilkins. Oh, sorry, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, my brain stopped for a second. Yeah. And uh, uh, Martin and Brett look so much alike. Now, Brett brought the crazy conditioning. And if Martin brought the same conditioning, you know, the, the, this would be something that he would uh, definitely be on the fourth place straight, straight uh, across the board. But I think he wasn't as... Uh, condition is dry it was apparent in his legs you know so if he's going to take a fourth place uh, i'm not sure i think that uh, uh hassan uh mustafa and uh, uh muhammad uh El -Amam, you know should be there ahead of him yeah you know so th this is the way i see the prejudging going but uh, finals a completely new show and it can go either way uh my money right now is uh, possibly ian is ahead of Steve, you know, on the, the dryness and conditioning. Uh, so uh, if Steve uh, tightened up a little bit for, for finals, I, I really think that uh, Steve went for that crazy fullness to overpower Ian. And I think maybe he's even holding a little bit too much glycogen. Yes. So this posing, 
hopefully drain him out a little bit and uh, he might be uh, my mother is calling <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh, th this is uh, about uh, uh, open division about 212 I would say that uh, uh, Austin Carr came way improved I mean he really spilled over he was not contender in happen. Chicago uh, yeah, he was in Chicago, Chicago. he was, uh, he was uh, uh, not contender, so he was played, placed out of top 10. This time, you know, he came very conditioned, uh, legs out of this world. He was still not as dry and maybe as lean as he should be uh, to win the contest in order to be at Olympia conditioning. But it was good enough because also uh, the guy that I see winning after prejudging, uh, Ahmad Al Sadani, uh, That's what it was. Yeah, That's, I yeah. love his shape. I love uh, everything about Ahmed. He's very aesthetic, complete. Yes. Uh, you know, I also saw him as the clear winner when he when he first came out um, in the in the groups. My eyes instantly went to him, and I I remembered him through all the comparisons. And then obviously the first call out came, and he he looked like he dominated up there. Great abs, great shape for 212. Uh, I mentioned to you during the call out. Yes, yes. Um, it's just it's, it's an exciting show, so stay I, tuned for tonight. I'm sure that you appreciate this kind of aesthetics and, yes. and the shape, and uh, I think that in this department, really, Ahmed Al Sudani has the, probably one of the best shapes uh, in 212 division. Yes. Anyway, he was still a little bit off and still a little bit watery, so conditioning is still not solved for him, but it's good enough to win this contest. Now, uh, you mentioned also, you notice, you don't know the name, but uh, Martin uh, Gomez. The baby blue trunks. The baby blue trunks, uh, yes. you know, is the best conditioned guy on the stage. Crazy peel. Yeah, crazy peel. And the I, rear especially, I, I liked all of his rear shots. You could see all the detail in his lats, his traps, glutes extremely dry, yeah. everything. He, he nailed his conditioning. He nailed his peak, I think, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think I see him third, even though, but, uh, but uh, positioning on the stage, maybe uh, Jason Herbert, is uh, taking his uh, place okay. for a third, but we, we're gonna see uh, definitely a guy Cicerino uh, was uh, top five, uh, veteran came in shape, came conditioned, and uh, making a top five in a show like this is, is a great success. Huge. So, for my money, uh, Ahmed Al Sadani over Austin Carr after the prejudging, we see what's gonna uh, happen in finals. Now, as I have you here, uh, let's talk about the classic physique, okay? Uh, so, first, you didn't accomplish the goal, but you came very close second. By uh, judging score sheets, you lost by one point. One point. You know, so tell me first how you feel about this uh, whole experience. Uh, it was a great experience. I had an amazing time, you know, up there posing and uh, putting on a show for everyone that was in the auditorium watching or everyone watching on the live feed. Um, I had a great time posing and battling it out with Steve and Robert. Uh, Robert came in very very big I was not expecting him to have that much size up top uh, it was a great show it was a good show I felt I, I looked my very best that I have to date overall fullness shape conditioning the the symmetry that I brought uh, my posing stage presence I thought everything was was on was on on point so um, just gonna keep improving keep just try to figure out where I'm getting exposed at you know bring up the lagging body parts and continue to push forward okay tell me about your posing routine uh, yeah, yeah. Man, uh, yeah, that was the, that was the the biggest disappointment of the night was, you know, getting through the the finals routine and and the music getting cut off whenever I had done like the third or fourth pose I think, uh, yeah I just felt like you know the the fans got robbed of of an awesome performance and uh, just a lot of work went into that routine you know two hours of posing every day since fuck I think like January. Uh, it was a lot of work, but you know you guys will see that poster routine here pretty soon again. Yes, actually, for those of you that are interested, please see my Instagram because I posted two days before. I witnessed, uh, you know, from beginning to the end, and the world needs to see it because that's perfection. It's, it's uh, posing mastery. Uh, I followed the, the sports since, uh, of course, 70s. I've seen uh, Mohammed Makavi, Ed uh, Corny, uh, Lila Brada, Sean Ray, all the great posers. And uh, after seeing that routine, I'm bold to say this is the best choreographed routine I've ever seen because yeah. there was a combination of about 30-something poses from uh, up, uh, bottom, side to front. Transitions were dramatic. And, uh, okay, 
you brought that classic. I, I think that classic, no, classic physique is brought to, be, to bring the beauty of uh, bodybuilders, of a shape, of aesthetics. You know, the, the human body, uh, a manly body that would be so pleasing. And uh, presentation of that body should be allowed. So the, the posing routines, especially for classic, should be allowed a little bit longer. I understand there was a two minute limit. Uh, uh, and 90, they said 90 seconds. 90 seconds, yeah, okay. They, they Which is 90. even less because, uh, okay, if you come to the uh, show and you do the choreograph routine like you, it's gonna bring the audience. You know, so uh, I'm uh, also disappointed about that. But uh, being a, a Logan's coach, you know, again, they're gonna say I'm biased. So I'm not gonna talk about the placings. You know, because uh, I respect, uh, I mean, oh my God, Robert Timms, it's phenomenon. Yeah. And now, for you guys, okay, that uh, uh, would not believe, Dennis James, his first coach, told me, Milos, I would put $50,000 bet that uh, uh, Tim is going to pass any drug test. He is drug free for life. Of course, for even people like Logan and, uh, and me, myself, it's like, how would that be possible? But would I put the $50,000? No, I wouldn't, <laughs> right? So just imagine if uh, Tim really accomplished this, uh, you know, naturally, this is, is phenomenal. But I would say this, he was upper body of the open bodybuilding uh, top six uh, competitors. Upper body, so much fullness, so much width, so much roundness, so much muscle, right? Huge. And, yeah, and legs, even though he brought it up, you know, still was not balanced, you know, to, to be really, uh, you know, that uh, aesthetic balance, you know. So on that note, you know, uh, you know, Robert, you're going to the Olympia, you said you're going to bring something, you know, more. I would just uh, tell you, focus on legs, bring the legs up. But uh, on a uh, on, uh, standpoint from um, my aspect, classic physique is about uh, classic beauty and classic lines. First year when I watched in 2019, uh, Chris Bamsad beat uh, 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 Brion and uh, Pedersen, uh, and you know I, I said like, well, they had more muscle, they had uh, you know more condition, and uh, you know maybe they should place ahead of Chris. But I said this is uh, classic physique rules, and then I learned what is about classic physique. So you look for the structure, you look for the shape, and that's a primary thing. I see you as a poster boy for a classic. Everything about you was classic. You know, the classic lines of this Steve Reeves, you know, the, the, the pioneer of the bodybuilding and everything. And uh, presentation was meticulous. I understand that uh, uh, you get to some feedback that you needed to bring even a better condition, yes. you know, for the next show, which is gonna be on a classic. So uh, it, it just, in your progression now, you went from 211 212? Yeah, 213 at 213. The, the Mr. Olympia to 219 Two, and a half. 219 and a half, and you still have a gap. Yes. Uh, you're six foot tall. So, more pounds, yeah. Yeah, so, so uh, you know, I can only imagine what we're going to present within a year from now. Yes, I'm excited to keep getting back to work and uh, getting ready for the next performance for you guys. So stay tuned. We're coming for you. Yeah. All right. For Master Development from Texas uh, Pro, this is Milo Sharchev.